You asked for more keys, they listened. This is a 65 XT. This is the Smitty Airboard 70 and it's being sold by Click Clack. This is a statement. And no foam. This showcase is sponsored, but my opinion is always my own. This board is definitely not perfect, but it kills it in some places. Just on the jump, we gotta talk about the aesthetics. This thing is not standard in any way. These extra column boards, the XTs are very rare. They gives you extra one or two columns on the left and it's a nice touch because you got extra keys while not messing with the mouse space over here. So you still, you know, this here is the premium version, the white gold, and it has 24K gold plated brass. It looks cool. Uh, it's just gonna cost more money. The top of the board has an extra brass piece that's like rose goldish and it has a mirror black piece in the middle and then sandwiched by another typical brass on the bottom. Definitely cool aesthetic from the top view. The side profile is very striking and looks damn nice. It looks very futuristic like a cyber truck maybe. The back of the board has a brass weight but it's much smaller and more understated. So nice little balance from the craziness that's going up on top. In terms of the front of the board, it has intentional ridges to follow the design language. It's kind of interesting because typically we're used to having it come down kind of like a cherry lip to be more comfortable. This is more looks forward. So yeah, there's no minimalism here. It's definitely intended to be a showpiece. What do you do with this XT column anyway? Well, honestly, you put artisans there. You could use macros or F keys, but honestly, I never use them. It's really there to look cool. Basically, there are a few things that make a keyboard obviously custom and having an X2 row is one of those things. In reality, when I'm trying to type, it actually messes me up because typically I have the escape key here and now I don't know if it's either this key or this key. So I ended up just mapping them both to be escape. The keyboard also has really sharp angles on the left and right side and definitely makes it more futuristic looking. Like this is a very unique looking keyboard. Wait, I forgot one thing. Check out this freaking RGB, man. Enough said, let's move on. This board is built with tons of options, flex cut and non flex cut PCB. It originally had only flex cut options, but judging from the IC, they went back to the drawing board and added the non flex cut options. That's definitely preferred. While 1.2 millimeter PCBs and flex cuts in the PCB in the plate make it more flexible, it's not very popular on the Western market because it makes it sound thin and muted, which isn't great. It's still there as an option if you're a feel first type of person, but I'm sound first, so I like it thick, I like it rigid, and I like it hard. The style on this board is very interesting. They're using these rubber pieces to isolate either the plate, the PCB, or both. There's three different options and you can move the little gasket pieces around to your taste. Of course, since it's a China GB, it comes with every foam known to man, but we don't sugarcoat things here. No foam used, we go foamless and move on from there. I originally built it with PCB mounts only, but I accidentally put on the plate mount pieces and ended up messing up the sound. It sounded pretty dang weak. The board itself sounded resonant, which is a synonym for hollow. The spacebar immediately slaps in a good way. Slaps, it pops, but you still got K sound, unfortunately. The left mod sounded weak initially, and we think that's due to the big gap right here between the left mods and the XT column. And that brass blocker there, everything that you put inside a board changes the sound. During the stream, I was told that the plate mount was the way to go, so we tried that. Still, meh. This was when Frank the Tank told me that I messed up the PCB mount. I wasn't supposed to use those corner pieces that was for the plate mount. So we ended up undoing it, going back to the PCB mount, which I did initially, and it sounded way better. Wait, it's actually better. Nice. Bro, bro, PCB mount better than plate mount? The sound still has a lot of resonance in the alphas. 
hollow, but some foam, some force break, whatever, you can fix that. The sound is pretty consistent overall, so at least you can get used to it. It's not gonna stand out in certain ways. So in my opinion, it's tolerable. In the end, we tried the dual mount, which means there's mounting pieces on the PCB, there's mounting pieces on the plate, and all slammed together. And I only use the stiff mounting pieces for all these. There's also the soft ones if you want a more flexible typing experience. The Alpha still, unfortunately, sounded hollow, but everything still sounded consistent. It sounds overall better because in some of the mounting options, the tab sounded weak. We know weak tab is not good, so I don't like that. But now it sounds pretty consistent. Right now I have the dual mount, but it will need foam. So in terms of the mounting styles, I would do the rigid one personally, and I would do the dual mount and use one layer of foam somewhere or try to force break it. Like it just needs a little bit more help. In terms of the mounting pieces, they're really easy to swap around so you can test you can experiment and see what you like personally locking those little rubber pieces is pretty satisfying you like there's a little nub and it pokes right through it's kind of weird but uh, I, I enjoyed it it's not really a difficult build at all there's plenty of instructions i just got scared because all these pieces came in but that's just because they offer so many unnecessary things that are kind of cool i guess like the custom cnc aluminum case for extra screws i didn't need a case for it but sure normally people use ziploc bags but hey if it's a more premium price board, I don't hate it. Also, I didn't use the adhesive paper or any of the foams, but they're all there if you want to tune your sound. If you want to use foam, you want to use tape, it's going to make a deeper sound. And also, it's going to have less of the switch character. So you're going to miss a lot of the frequencies of the switch, but it's all up to you. A lot of people still like Thok, and I'm not going to hate you for it. In terms of the switches we use here, we ended up doing Gateron Oil Kings that were cleaned and then lubed and then filmed on aluminum. It sounded pretty good. Frank the Tank said that if you use long poles, it's gonna sound great. And long poles are kind of like a cheat code to make sure that boards sound good. If there's ping or hollowness, a long pole switch, because of the way it bottoms out, is going to improve the sound. The pen you can drop it in. Right. Oil King. Pen you. Oil King. Pen you. If you don't mind reduced travel and you like the sound signature of long pole switches, that's great. But in my opinion, long poles end up sounding a lot like each other. So you're not going to be able to experiment as much if you're kind of forced to use long pole. As for the value proposition, this is an expensive boy. It's a showpiece with custom PCB, custom CNC, 24K gold plated brass, and a mirror glass back with futuristic RGB glow. It comes at a cost, but it's in stock. This keyboard is $469 and has a very striking appearance. If you want to go bougie bougie like this unit, which is the white gold, it's $549. I probably wouldn't go for this unit. I would probably go for $469. In stock is good. You can get it right away. Uh, well, it's a two week pre-order group buy. So you wait a little bit. It's not that bad. It's not like a few months till Christmas. For this being this price, I can't really tell you what to do, but there were tons of fans in the Twitch stream that really love this board and the aesthetic and they were waiting for it. For aesthetic first, sound second, this is a pretty solid board. It's passable, not really ideal without foam or mods. So as a sound guy, I would personally pass, but the space bar is almost a 10 out of 10. It sounds full, it sounds great. It's just the case overall. It just has so much room in there that it needs some uh, pour on help. So yeah, in stock now, link in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.